Welcome to worship. My name is Lindsay Drake and I serve on staff as the Director of Adult Discipleship at Collegiate Wesley. And it is so good to be worshiping with you this morning. I would like to extend a special welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us for the first time. Welcome. We are so glad that you are here today. For all of you who call Collegiate Wesley home, for all of you who worship with us regularly, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. Over the past few weeks, we have been reaching out to our community and saying thank you and we care about you. We've reached out to our Psy bus drivers, to our sanitation workers, to our municipal workers. And this week, we'd like to encourage you to reach out to someone that needs a little extra care. It has been a particularly hard week, starting with the death and murder of George Floyd, with the Black Lives Matter movement and protests. All of this while still living through a global pandemic. It has been a very hard week. And so we would like to encourage you to reach out to someone who needs a little extra care, to remind them that you care about them, that you love them, and that God loves them. I'd invite you to call someone on the phone, to send a letter, to make a meal for someone. Whatever you do, this week, let's just spread a little extra love and remind people how important they are. I'd also like to invite you all to consider joining a new book club. We are forming a book club to focus on anti-racism, and we're going to start by reading the book White Fragility. If this is something you'd like to be a part of, I'd invite you to go to our website under the Get Involved tab. You can choose groups and there you will find open small groups. Please consider joining us. We would love to have this conversation with you. And now I would like to invite you all to take some time to fill out our digital connection card and check in. For those of you watching on Facebook Live, you'll find a link to our connection card in the comments section. Otherwise, if you're watching on our website or on YouTube, you can find our connection card on our digital worship page. So let's all take a moment to fill out our connection cards and to check in. Good morning, church. For our centering piece today, I'd like to read a piece from an act of reconciliation and sharing of the peace. This was read at a Thanksgiving service on May 8, 1994 in South Africa. I think it, uh, this idea of reconciliation that's mentioned in this quite a bit uh, will be helpful for us in our nation. Throughout the land, we stand on the threshold of a new experience of national unity. We are a people composed of many races, many languages, many religious traditions, many political parties, many cultures. We are poor and rich, women and men, young and old. We have emerged from a history of strife and death to seek a future of life and health. We acknowledge the presence of Christ among us who reconciles the world. We struggled against one another. Now we are reconciled to struggle for one another. We believed it was right to withstand one another. Now we are reconciled to understand one another. We endured the power of violence. Now we are reconciled to the power of tolerance. We suffered a separateness that did not work. Now we are reconciled to make togetherness work. We believed we alone held the truth. Now we are reconciled in the knowledge that truth holds us. We tried to frighten one another into submission. Now we are reconciled to lift one another into fulfillment. We fought to call the land our own. Now we know reconciliation is in knowing that earth belongs to God and we are stewards of it. We let greed control us. Now we know reconciliation is measured by the development of the poor. In church and state, we often hurt each other. Now we are reconciled to healing one another. We set the church at odds with itself. Now we are reconciled to sharing the mission of Christ. 
We rejected other people of faith as godless. Now we are reconciled to seek God's way for all of us. We puffed ourselves up to demand others bow to us. Now we are reconciled to embrace one another in humility before God. We do not pretend we have already won or are already perfect. Now we are reconciled to press on together to the fullness which lies ahead. So we bring together our races, languages, traditions, politics, and cultures. We are reconciled to the patience and persistence that make peace, to the transparency and fairness that make justice, to the forgiveness and restitution that build harmony, to the love and reconstruction which banish poverty and discrimination, to the experience of knowledge about one another that makes it possible to enjoy one another, to the spiritual strength of one God who made us one flesh and blood and loves us. Let us share the peace together. Amen. Hi there, children of God. I am so grateful that you are joining us for digital worship today. I wanted to start off by reminding you that every single person watching this video is a child of God. God loves you so much. You are a child of this earth. So as a child of God and of this earth, you are loved no matter what you look like, no matter who you love, no matter the color of your skin, you are loved. I am so thankful to get to share some time with you this morning. So to get started, I would like to invite you to go on a book journey with me. So I'm going to invite you to get comfortable wherever you may be right now. You can lay down, you can sit down in a comfortable spot. I'm gonna be showing the pictures on the screen so you might wanna be able to see the screen. Otherwise, close your eyes and just listen to the words. All right, let's get this book started now. Our book today is called When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner, illustrated by David Catrow. When God made you, 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 when God made you, God made you all shiny and new, an incredible you, a you all your own, a you unlike anyone else ever known. An exclusive design, one God refined, you are perfectly crafted, one of a kind. Because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you. God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning, Amid history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes, your head shape and size, and knew what you'd look like when you felt surprised. God pictured your nose and all ten of your toes. The sound of your voice, God had it composed. The lines on your hands, your hair, every strand. God knew every detail like it was all planned. Out of a billion of faces from cultures, all races. People God made from all different places. God knew your name. Your picture is framed. God's family without you? would not be the same. Because when God made you, this much is true. The world got to meet who God already knew. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes, you, in all of your glory, Bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. 
So be you, fully you. A show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith, but love more. And learn and relearn all that God made you for. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas and then put them to action. Because God loves you creating, your true self displaying. When light on the inside through art is portraying. When you make believe the stories conceived, the heroics, the magic, those tricks up your sleeves. When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world all your own. God smiles and here's why, in the spark of your eye, a familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Because when God made you, and the world oohed and odd, in heaven they called you an image of God. You, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true, that you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind, a dreamer who, dream, who dreams in big and small themes, one who keeps dreaming in journeys upstream, a mover, a shaker, a lover of nature, a builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words, love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too. You being you is God's dream come true. Cause when God made you, all of heaven was beaming over you. God was smiling and already dreaming. The end. So what did you think of our book? Did you know that God imagined so many things for you? One of my favorite lines was this. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas and then put them to action. World changers, I know you have a lot of ideas and I know you have a lot of passions, things that mean a lot to you, things that you love. So how are you being a world changer? How are you putting those thoughts into action? Today we're celebrating Pentecost Sunday. And Pentecost Sunday is when the disciples were waiting for a sign, waiting for what was next. And so God sent the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is God living inside us. It's how we feel God's presence and action and love in our lives. And so the Holy Spirit came on the, came upon the disciples and they had an idea and they put it to action. And that has formed what is now the church, the Christian church. And there's a lot of different denominations within the Christian church and we're one of them. So because they had an idea and they put it to action, we have this beautiful congregation of people who celebrate and love God together. One idea can change the world. 
you can change the world. Would you say a prayer with me? I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath in and exhale out. Would you repeat after me? Loving creator, thank you so much for ideas. Give us the courage to put them into action. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and I hope that you go change the world. Today's scripture is um, about the Pentecost story. It's from the second chapter of Acts. <clears throat> uh, after I finish reading the text, uh, we're going to play um, a composition by Jeff Prater, a longtime uh, collegiate uh, Wesley UMC member and also a member of the choir. Uh, Jeff composed this piece. It's about three minutes long that uh, corresponds with this passage. So I think it's supposed to be played while I read, but the mechanics of trying to make that work uh, just didn't play out this time. So I'm going to read the text and then we'll play Jeff's piece. I really appreciate Jeff's uh, offering this. And uh, I hope that you, as you listen to it, that you'll hear, listen for the dissonance and, and corresponds with the uh, chaos in the passage as well. So here are these words. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. On the day of Pentecost, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, all the believers were meeting together they in were one all place. With one accord in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a there mighty came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire tongues like appeared of fire. and settled on each of them. And it sat upon each and of them. everyone present was filled with the Holy and they Spirit. Were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit began to gave speak them other tongues this as ability. The Spirit gave them utterance. 
والطفق يتكلمون بلغات أخرى. Y fueron todos llenos del Espíritu Santo y comenzaron a hablar en otras lenguas como el Espíritu les daba que hablase. Y начали говорить на иных языках, как Дух давал им провещевать. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who the were being added to saved. The daily, such as should be saved. This ends the reading of God's holy word. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it's ironic that this passage starts that they were all gathered in one place. Um, we're far from that, aren't we? Uh, this is a strange time that we're in when we want to be gathered together, but um, it's in our, everybody's uh, best health and safety that, that we aren't. I guess we are gathered together in a way. Uh, worldwide, we're gathered together in trying to fight this pandemic. Uh, the United States um, is gathered together now as we deal again with racism and um, the uh, unnecessary uh, death of uh, Floyd George. So um, I guess we're gathered together in hearts and spirits as well. Uh, the people that were there at Pentecost on that first uh, day of Pentecost were there because they were celebrating um, a, a Jewish holiday. It was to um, celebrate the spring harvest as well as celebrate the um, Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. So um, it was it took place 50 days after Passover. So the writer of Luke has borrowed from this and um, this takes place 50 days after Easter. Uh, this was supposed to be celebrated last Sunday. Um, we're just a week off, but I think we'll be uh, okay. So the people had gathered and they were unexpectedly, there came this violent wind and a noisy wind and also these flames of fire were over each head. Um, Jesus had told the disciples to go to Jerusalem and to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. I'm guessing they weren't expecting it to come quite this way. This was uh, quite a shock. If you can imagine all gathered together to celebrate one aspect of their life, and then all of a sudden uh, this, takes, this takes place. I think the most interesting thing about this is that um, they, they, they were able to hear each other in the different languages that were spoken. So uh, the Holy Spirit sort of forces them to uh, accept the stranger and the person who... Uh, is difficult to understand. Some people thought that they were drunk, that they were acting crazy, and uh, it, it must be because of uh, alcohol. Peter stands up. He's given authority by the Holy Spirit to preach, and he shares that this is um, the coming of God's Spirit, and that uh, this will uh, re result in uh, young people dreaming dreams and old people seeing new visions. Um, it's a it's a great day for um, new vision and new understanding and coming together as a community. I think the uh, 
one of the important aspects of this for me, as I said earlier, is this coming together, strangers being able to listen to one another. Um, there's a poet, a uh, Palestinian-American poet. Her name is Naomi uh, Shaheb Nye. Uh, she was born in St. Louis. Her father is a Palestinian. Her mother's American. And she's a poet. She's a writer. She uh, writes songs. And she writes a story about something that happened to her, which I think uh, sounds an awful lot like Pentecost. She was in the Albuquerque, New Mexico airport and had been told that her flight was going to be delayed four hours. So <clears throat> she was uh, trying to figure out what she's going to do with her time. As she was sitting there, all of a sudden, um, an announcement came over the intercom system that anybody that knew Arabic, if they would report to gate 4A, uh, it would be appreciated. Well, that's actually the gate that she was going to leave from. So she headed for that gate. And as she arrived, she noticed that there was a woman on the floor who was flailing around and wailing and crying. And the people at the desk came to um, uh, Naomi and asked if she knew Arabic. She said she knew some. So she went over to the woman and sat on the floor next to her and started to speak to her in Arabic. Uh, the woman calmed down and they discovered that uh, she had what she had heard instead of the flight being delayed, uh, she thought it was canceled. And she had an important medical appointment the next day in El Paso. So she was uh, distraught from this news. So Naomi spoke to her in uh, uh, Arabic and calmed her down. Uh, she asked who was supposed to pick her up in El Paso, and she said her son. So they called her son, and the son talked to, her, to his mother and told her that everything would be okay. The flight was going to be delayed, but that she would get there in time. Uh, Naomi stayed with her and continued to talk to her. She called her father, who was um, Palestinian, and asked him to speak to her, which uh, he did, and they found out that they had some common uh, friends. Um, and then Naomi also decided to call some of her Palestinian poets, uh, and they also talked to her and, and calmed her down. <clears throat> Eventually, they got her up off the floor, had her sitting in a seat, and uh, she be, she um, started to uh, uh, feel better, and she, she was uh, digging into all the packages that she had, and she brought out some cookies, which were uh, uh, cookies, I, I think it's pronounced mamul, um, and they're basically um, a, a doughy cookie with um, dates and nuts, and then it's rolled in uh, powdered sugar. So she she took those out, and she, she stood up, and she started to hand them to the uh, other women who were waiting, and each woman um, accepted her gift of cookies, uh, the airline saw what was going on, and they sent out a tray with uh, liquids on it. And um, two little girls from the flight started to hand out uh, apple juice. So uh, as when Naomi wrote about that, she said it looked like communion with um, the woman who was distraught handing out the uh, powdered cookies and the young girls handing out the um, apple juice. Um, this reminded her of, of communion. She was also surprised that everybody uh, received a cookie from the woman. Um, everyone was uh, gl glad to receive it. Um, as Naomi reflected on this, she said, this is the shared world that, um, that she always writes about and hoped for, where everyone came together in this moment and accepted what each uh, had to offer. There was no apprehension on anybody's part. Uh, this was the world that she um, wanted to see happen. Um, as she um, got together with, with everyone, they were um, laughing and giggling about what took place. Um, they were all united. It sounds like Pentecost to me, doesn't it? That um, in this situation, where it could have led to, um, you know, misery for everyone, uh, turned out to be a happy occasion. I thought it was interesting that if, if Naomi hadn't shown compassion to this woman, this thing, this whole thing might not have happened. So Naomi's uh, initial response to, to show compassion and to speak to her in the language that the woman was used to uh, helped help bring about some sense of calm and, and peace. Um, that That seems to me to be what Pentecost is about, that even though there's differences and that 
um, we, we struggle in this uh, divided nation, in this divided world to try and come together. Uh, the spirit is about uh, bringing us together when we can so that we can overcome these divisions and um, work together uh, for peace. Last Sunday night, I went to a, a prayer vigil at Union Park in Des Moines. Union Park is located north of uh, Lutheran Hospital. Um, it's just southwest of Grandview College. It's a beautiful park. It's where the carousel is. So if you're familiar with that, uh, that's where Union Park is. So there was a prayer vigil for Floyd George um, in, the, in the park that evening. I was a little apprehensive about going because I didn't want to get involved in any rioting or, or looting or anything. But I thought I was pretty safe there in the park because there's, there's no businesses around it. And it was a prayer a vigil, which those words sound softer than a march. So um, so I went. Uh, everybody had on masks. Uh, we separated ourselves by six feet. Um, there were a mixture, a really good mixture of every race there. And I was really moved by the speeches that were that were given. People were compassionate and they were very passionate as well. Um, partway through the service, uh, the leader of it asked us to all take a knee. So we uh, kneeled on the grass and we kneeled for nine minutes. Uh, this nine minutes represented the amount of time where the officer had his knee on the, uh, Floyd's uh, neck. Um, it's been a long time since I've kneeled for nine minutes. And it was, uh, but it was so, so powerful because the park went quiet. Nobody said anything. After about four minutes, there was a woman that stood up in the middle of all of us, and she started to wail and started to cry. And she started to call out um, about the injustice. She talked about her children, her sons, being racially profiled and how tired she was of it. She talked about deaths of people that she knew. Um, just this one voice, and there must have been between, I don't know, 500 and 1,000 people there, we, we we were all silent. We were all on one knee as she cried and uh, cried out for justice. After a while, after she finished and before the nine minutes were up, someone uh, yelled out, I can't breathe. Someone from the other side of the crowd uh, responded to that and said, I can't breathe. Pretty soon the whole, uh, all of us were chanting that phrase, I can't breathe. It was a very moving moment. Um, I was, like I said, I was apprehensive at first about going, but it's one of those times when the Holy Spirit felt to me broke out. It felt like we were all united, that we were all concerned about uh, our nation and about the divisiveness. And we prayed, we prayed that night that uh, God would come in and would bring healing uh, to, to all of us and to a new way of life, a new way of being with each other. Uh, that was a vision that I think Joel wrote about that Peter talked about and preached about that day, uh, all of all of this uh, desire for uh, a new vision, a new way of being with each other, regardless of the color of our skin. It was a powerful experience. When uh, Naomi helped this woman get up and get into the airplane, uh, one of the sacks she noticed contained a plant and it's in the tradition of that culture that if you travel, you take a plant with you, that you're rooted uh, in your uh, home. Um, I love that imagery. We are rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are pulled together where there is no apprehension, when we are willing to receive and love and care for one another. Uh, I look forward to the days when this church will be able to come back together safely in a safe way, when we can worship together, and may the Holy Spirit continue to, to blow, may the Holy Spirit continue to lead us and guide us to dream dreams and to see new visions. Amen. Spirit, Spirit.
feet of gentleness blow through the wilderness calling and free spirit spirit of restlessness stir me from placidness wind wind on the sea You moved on the waters, you called to the deep, then you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep, and over the eons you called to each thing, awake from your slow. rise on your wings spirit spirit of gentleness blow through the wilderness calling and free spirit spirit of restlessness stir me from blood Sidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow, the captive dream dreams. Our women see this. Our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. Before our prayer, I wanted to announce that next Sunday, one of our ISU students, uh, Priscilla Joel, will be bringing the message. She's going to preach next Sunday. We had planned for her to preach the Sunday following Easter, but um, everything went haywire during that time. So um, at this time, next Sunday, she's going to preach. She, uh, I believe she'll be a senior this year at ISU, and she plans to go into seminary after that. So uh, I wanted to give her an opportunity to, uh, to bring the word. So we look forward to Priscilla next Sunday. Hear these words of prayer. Oh God, I was amazed and astonished last Sunday night at the unity that existed during a time of crisis, during a time of division. In our story of the airport, Naomi was amazed and astonished at how things worked out and how people were not apprehensive and people received the gift of, of the woman who was uh, bewildered. Let us unite our hearts and minds in prayer for our world and may God's uh, astonishment and amazement um, continue to be revealed through the Holy Spirit. For the church throughout the world, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Inspire the sons and daughters of your church for prophetic witness to your truth. And upon old and young, give clarity of vision to acknowledge your saving power in the world. For nations and its leaders, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Overcome the babble of misunderstanding among the nations and let all people hear in their own language and recognize in their own culture your unifying message of love. For planet Earth, our home, Almighty God, hear our prayer. By your Spirit, renew the Earth, make us good stewards of its resources and teach us to enjoy its abundance rightly. For those in need of healing, 
Almighty God, hear our prayer. Send your healing spirit upon those who are sick, restore them to health, and restore them to the joy of your salvation. For our neighbors and members of our civic community, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Teach us to be good neighbors and to live in peace with one another and in friendship share the joys and burdens of daily life. For our children, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Bless our children, protect them from danger, and help parents and caregivers nurture them so that they may mature in wisdom and grow in grace. For our enemies, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Bless our enemies and show us how we may do good to them for the sake of Jesus Christ. In your astonishing and amazed mercy, Almighty God, receive our prayers. And according to your wisdom, provide all that we need through Jesus Christ by the power of your amazing and astonishing Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, it is now the time in our service where you can put your gifts into action. Though we are not gathering together in our building, the building is not the church. The church still continues. Small groups are still meeting. Care is still being given. Educational opportunities are still happening. Service is still happening. We are still the church. We'd invite you to take this time to give to the continued work of your church family. We will post a link in the comments now that will direct you to our online giving page. You can also still mail a check to the church office and you can find that information on our website if you do not already have it. We will also post that information in the comment section as you're watching Facebook Live. If you are not watching Facebook Live, we'd invite you to go to the link posted um, on the next screen um, and go ahead and give there. We appreciate your generous gifts and continue to use them in ways that God is calling us to be the church and to be the community. Today is also Peace with Justice Sunday. And so we're gonna watch this short video to explain a little bit about what that is. And I'd also encourage you to give to the Peace with Justice special offering as that money goes towards exactly that, peace and justice within our world. Thank you for your gifts.
receive this benediction. <clears throat> now, may this amazing and astonishing Holy Spirit surprise you at airports, at parks, in your neighborhood, and in the church to bring unity and peace to God's creation. Amen.